The Bank of England recently raised interest rates to 3%, but that was widely expected, so that's not the interesting bit. The interesting part is what they said that they don't normally say. In the minutes from the meeting where the decision was made, they included this line. Further increases in bank rate may be required for a sustainable return of inflation to target, albeit to a peak lower than priced into financial markets. This is interesting because at the time when they said that, the markets were pricing in a peak interest rate of 4.7%. So this is the Bank of England signalling that they believe they'll bring inflation under control with a peak interest rate of lower than that. They don't normally make statements that are that precise. So it seems that after finally starting to talk tough about the need to increase interest rates, they're now trying to talk market expectations back down again. And that's probably because the impact that those market expectations are having on mortgages. As we covered in a previous video, fixed rate mortgages have spiked recently because of the money market's belief that interest rates are gonna rise considerably in future. As we said they probably would, those expectations have fallen over the last month, even before the Bank of England's announcement, and therefore the cost of fixed rate mortgages has come down too. The day after the announcement, this story in the FT suggested that mortgage rates would come down further as a result, which seems highly likely to me, and is why I said in a previous video that I personally would be keeping my option open right now with a tracker mortgage rather than going for a fix. On to house prices, which fell in October for the first time in 15 months, falling by 0.9%. In a masterful piece of misreporting, we then saw headlines like this, warning of potential 30% drops to house prices. But if you read a few paragraphs down, the actual quote is, my best case is slowly increasing house prices and my worst case is potentially a 30% fall, but those are two extremes which are tail probabilities. In other words, the screaming number in the headline is highly unlikely to happen. It's worth bearing in mind that almost all predictions around house prices turn out to be wrong. So for the most part, it's best to just take a long-term view get on with it and not be spooked by all the terrible things that are apparently going to happen. In this video, I run through how listening to predictions over the last few years could have conservatively cost you more than £60,000. Meanwhile, Zoopla have released data that explores future house price movements in relation to mortgage rates. They believe that if mortgage rates fall towards 4%, which of course is exactly what's happening, house prices may still fall by up to 5%. Of course, whatever happens with prices, what you'll see reported is an average, and some property types and areas will be hit harder than others. It's entirely possible that next year we'll see house prices rising in some areas and falling in others, with London likely to be the hardest hit because that's where affordability is the most stretched and therefore changes to mortgage rates will have the biggest impact. Also on house prices, HomeTrack released data on the performance of 65 UK cities which saw a cluster of strong growth in the Northwest, including Wigan, Warrington, Bolton, and Rochdale, and another in the East Midlands with Nottingham, Mansfield, and Derby. This pretty much echoes what we predicted at the start of the year, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we'll be talking about our hotspots for next year soon. And there are no surprises at the bottom of the table where the cities that were leading the pack on growth in previous years, including London, Edinburgh, and Oxford, have now slowed right down. Whatever happens to house prices, the rental market is stronger than ever, with rents hitting an all-time high, according to Rightmove. And London may struggle the most when it comes to prices, but rental growth is high and competition for homes in the capital is intense. This is a story reported in The Telegraph about how record numbers of tenants are being asked to pay rent up front. This is unfortunate, but hardly surprising. It's becoming increasingly difficult to remove tenants who don't pay. And at the same time, there's masses of demand, so landlords can choose whoever they want and go with the strongest applicants. That means that they can de-risk themselves by asking for rent up front. And if they can, they will. Speaking of politics, Michael Gove is back and has announced a government target to build 300,000 homes per year. This is about as relevant as me announcing a target to bench press 150 kilograms because it's not going to happen. I can't remember any government ever hitting a house building target, but it's good to try, I guess. Political support for limiting the number of holiday lets in England is growing, with 10 MPs now supporting an amendment to an upcoming bill that would require all holiday lets to have a licence which could of course be refused to control numbers. This seems to me almost guaranteed to happen at some point, but that's not the only political change in the works. Watch this video next, where we explain plans that could make millions of properties illegal to rent out. 